What's going on everyone, it's your Rifle here, and in today's video I'm going to be going over the update that happened today, April 14, 2015. This is actually a pretty large update that they did, and not to mention, it's an important update. But all updates in a way are important, I mean, they're slowly and slowly making the game better, and also listening to the community, and improving our gameplay. Before I get started with this, if you could, please take a little bit of your time, and leave a like. It's much appreciated by me, and also I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to address all the changes that had happened in this update. So bear with me, there are tons of changes. Bungie has said with this update, they are responding to player feedback and addressing larger issues that compromise the quality of the Destiny experience, such as not having enough room for all of our gear that we got. Yeah, that's right, they finally made the vault space larger. So now you won't have to have a character as a mule for carrying your gear. I know some of you understand what I'm talking about. You put a lot of your gear on a certain character and just use that character as a mule pretty much. The vault capacity increased to 24 armor slots, 36 weapon slots, now that's a huge improvement, and 24 general slots. Also they disabled the gear comparison in vault on Xbox 360 and PS3 platforms to account for additional slot memory. But that isn't all, they actually did tons of little fixes in this update. So let's get more into this. They also did a colorblind change for motion tracker, loot drops, shield energy, and item categories. They also updated the audio controls in the settings menu where you can change the volume control and the music. Another pretty convenient little feature that they added, they added an item lock which allows players to prevent gear and weapons from being accidentally dismantled. Yeah, I know. Sounds pretty unbelievable, but people do accidentally dismantle some crazy gear. I mean, they get tons of drops that they want to dismantle, and then they accidentally dismantle the exotics, which I'm not sure how that actually plays out, because it takes quite a bit of time to accidentally dismantle an exotic, but there were quite a bit of complaints of people accidentally doing that. So they decided to add the item lock. Also, the purple ball in the tower has been reborn. It's now a more interactive spear, and it just seems to have better quality. I mean, you can even see the reflection on the spear now. As for the weapon updates go, they fixed a bug that caused their player to lose ammo when switching weapons while dead. They also fixed a bug where ammo consumables did not reliably replenish the ammo, such as, say like you were dead, and you go to use a heavy ammo, and then all of a sudden, you actually didn't get that heavy ammo, well, they fixed that. The Pocket Infinity is also a more reliable weapon now, and also the 4th Horseman weapon has been restored to the original intended values for it, which the 4th Horseman is an exclusive shotgun for the PlayStation. As for the perks go for the weapons, they updated the Thorn's first person player feedback poison effect, White Nail perk no longer triggers on immune targets, Defensive Reflex on the Don't Touch Me perk no longer triggers on throwing knives. There was also a performance bonus ammo on fusion rifles reduced to match shotguns and sniper rifles. And they also fixed an issue introduced in the previous update that allowed the icebreaker to persist ammo after respawn. As you guys can see, there are tons of minor fixes that they decide to add into this update, which is always some great news. They are always bringing a bunch of fixes in each update. And in my opinion, that is great to see. It has to be pretty tough for the developers to keep up with all these fixes that they're doing. All right, anyways, to get further into this update, the world fixes that they decide to do are players can now choose to wear their helmets in social spaces. As you guys can see, I'm wearing the Mask of the Third Man in the tower now. They have an option in the settings where you can toggle it on or off. Quest loot pyramid icons are now easier to spot. They also added quest indicator badges to the tower when a quest is either completed and ready to turn in. They also increased Crota's Bane reputation rewards on Eris Morn's bounties. They fixed a bug where players equipped items did not receive experience from completing missions. They also fixed a bug where the Black Garden level 30 featured story was incorrectly listed at level 28. And lastly but not least for the world changes, they also fixed a bug where heavy ammo consumables were not available for purchase from Xur. So Xur will always be selling heavy ammo consumables. As for the strike updates go, it looks like they are targeting Mars. Valus strength has been reduced by 33% and also reduced the number of major enemies in the Valus fight. And for the Dust Palace PlayStation exclusive strike, they reduced the number of major enemies in the Scion Flare fight and also they lowered the strength on the Scion Flare's shield. Now as for the two raids go, starting with the Vault of Glass, the Vault of Glass will no longer display a highlighted activity notification despite players' best efforts to remove it. They also fixed a bug where splash damage was able to penetrate through the bubble. Shield Relic melee attacks now land Minotaurs more consistently, and they improved issues associated with walking through the teleporter. If you guys noticed, if more than one person walked through the teleporter at once, some would not go through the teleporter. And that was a major issue going against Atheon. Now for the Crota's End. 
Kurta will now wait until fully standing before a sword attack. So that might mean that you're going to be able to get some more cleaner hits on him without him getting up immediately and killing you. They also fixed a bug where the sword would immediately despawn after killing the sword bear, which was always annoying to say the least. And also, swords will now last a full 30 seconds after being picked up. As for the PvP update, there is quite a bit of changes to it. They greatly reduced the weighting of Blind Watch and Firebase Delphi and Control, Iron Banner, and Inferno Control playlists. They also fixed a bug where a player that was killed by an enemy could commit suicide and be revived for points, pretty much boosting. They also fixed a bug that prevented players from receiving points for neutralizing a control zone. They fixed a bug where capture points were not properly disabled after the game ends. They also added incremental revive timers to skirmish and salvage. Each time a teammate revives you, it takes longer before you can be revived again. Currently, plus 5 seconds each revive. Stopping power now requires shotgun kills instead of sprees. Target practice metal now requires hand cannon kills instead of sprees. And electrocutioner now requires fusion rifle kills instead of sprees. As for the PvP map changes go, and nominally added invisible physics over the pool table to keep people from hiding, which that's always a bonus, less campers. Shores of Time added a kill volume to the open edge of A cave and to keep players from hiding, you know they couldn't hide back behind A. The Burning Shrine also moved the spawn point to fix camera view. As for the ammunition changes go in the PvP, Crates are now visible for all players long before they are available to pick up, with a countdown timer added to show when they will arrive. So that's always good for new players trying out the PvP. So they are not completely getting dominated. Guardians no longer drop special ammo on death, and they also lowered the amount of special ammo picked up from crates, from 50% to 25%, down to now 25%. Special ammo crate respawn time raised from 45 seconds to 120 seconds now. So now we are going to be seeing less of special ammo. I know when I play the PvP I am always stacked on special ammo, so that could be kind of a benefit in a way to help equal out the gameplay. They also increased drop radius when a friendly picks up a special crate from 20 meters to 100 meters now. They slightly increased interaction time on special ammo crates from 0.1 seconds to now 0.8. They also reduced the number of special crates on the maps and relocated them from 6 to 8 crates, now down to 3 to 5 crates. Special and heavy ammo bricks now despawn when a player dies or they are on a timer. 20 seconds for special and 30 seconds for heavy. Heavy ammo now lets everyone know which player or faction picked up ammo, and also increased warning time on heavy ammo from 10 seconds to now 15. As for the UI update goes, new visual treatment to quest nodes and nodes that involve quest activities or steps. So now it's more easier to follow. Players can now click the left stick to hide the UI when inspecting items for screenshotting or sharing purposes. So that's always beneficial, especially if you're wanting to get a good screenshot without all those perks in the way. To do that, as you guys can see, it's in the bottom right. All you have to do is toggle by pressing in the stick. They also fixed a bug where precision kills did not appear correctly, and the UI flyouts are now easier to navigate. And as for the audio changes, they fixed issues where stealth vandal audio was being suppressed by gunfire or other loud sounds. Titan Ward of Dawn now has audio indicators at low energy so players can more easily read when it will time out. And players walking into enemy wards of Dawn now hear a sound when blindness is applied. And they also did some changes when playing with players. They fixed an issue where combined arms grimmer card was pointing to the wrong unlocked conditions such as it would say you were just getting kills with Warlock when you are really playing as a hunter. They also fixed an issue where Grimmer cards were awarding the incorrect number of Grimmer points. And lastly but not least, the technical changes. They fixed a rare soft lock when a player's internet connection drops. They clarified errors that display when user has the insufficient hard drive space. And also better handling of rest mode resume on PS4. But yeah guys, that is all the updates. As you guys can see, there are tons of fixes now. So now hopefully the game is going to be running a lot more smooth with these updates and not to mention to help better your experience with destiny bungie is always listening to our feedback and it's great to see that hey that rhymed anyways i'm out of here though guys if you could please take a little bit of your time and leave a like and thank you so much for checking out my video remember to stay safe and don't sleep and pee peace out a lot of people actually think that bad juju is actually bad poo poo but I'm here to tell you that it's not. Anyways, before I get started with that, I'm also going to be going over the Red Death. Yeah, that's right, I don't have no special name for the Red Death, but the Red Death is absolutely amazing, and in this video I'm going to be explaining